I'm going to show you about uh, enjoy fellowship with God. So this is written by uh, Apostle John. So he said in his uh, writings in uh, 1 John chapter 1, he said uh, in verse uh, 5 to 10, verse 5, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. So in Jesus, there is always light. There is no darkness at all. So now it is not a uh, literal translation, or it is not a literal meaning about uh, light and darkness. So it is not uh, like uh, sunlight, no? So sunlight and uh, moonlight or starlight or lamplight. So it is not like that. But what he says is that Jesus is light and no darkness in him. It means to say that all in God is transparent. So there is nothing to be hidden, to be hidden. So all are transparent in the eyes of God. So God is light. So as we fellowship with God, our life must be transparent. That's why uh, it's uh, very important for us to live in uh, honesty because uh, God is light. So God is light. So there is no darkness in him. So as we enjoy fellowship, uh, what we call, as, what, what is the word fellowship? So the word fellowship is, uh, that is our connection, our uh, relationship, enjoying our relationship with our God. We must enjoy our relationship or our togetherness. So that is fellowship, togetherness. Now we, we enjoy togetherness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now uh, Apostle Peter, uh, Apostle, Apostle John, uh, because Apostle John is the closest disciple uh, of the 12 uh, disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Apostle John was the closest of all. So he enjoyed fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why he shared in his epistle, he said that uh, uh, as we fellowship, as we fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he is the light and no darkness at all in him. So he says there, uh, if we claim we have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. So it says here, if we claim to have fellowship with him. So claim, if we claim. So it means to say that, you know, what do you mean by claim? So it means to say that uh, we acknowledge or we recognize that we are Christians, or we recognize that uh, we are believers of Jesus, or we recognize that uh, we belong to Jesus, but... Uh, we are walking in darkness. So what uh, Apostle John teaching us about this uh, walking in darkness. So, you know, that uh, in the past uh, uh, lessons that we are talking about is that uh, pagans or those uh, non-believers are those people who do not live in accordance with what Jesus is teaching about. So those are pagans or those are non-believers. Those are people who walk in darkness. So now walking in darkness, it means to say that living in sin or uh, a person uh, who is claiming a Christian or who is claiming that he is a believer, he's a believer of Jesus Christ. And then his life is in continual sinning. He lived in sin. So that is walking in darkness so to have fellowship to claim that we have fellowship with jesus christ it means that we stop sinning we already stop sinning we already repented our sins we repent and stop sinning that is we can claim that we have fellowship with our lord jesus christ now uh, maybe there are questions uh, like uh, are we uh, can we do that uh, living as Christians or living as godly, uh, what Jesus had told us. Now, uh, God has provided us His Word, the Bible. God has provided us His Word, the living Word, the authoritative Word, the uh, in, uh, what we call this uh, infallible Word. So, the Word of God, the Bible. So, that is manual for life. So, in order to live in accordance with what Jesus is teaching about, is to uh, study, to read the Bible, and apply it in our daily lives. So that is 
Uh, another thing is that uh, God has provided us His Holy Spirit. God has provided us His Holy Spirit because uh, the big question is, can we live a holy life? Can we live a holy life? So that is a question because uh, we are human being and we are vulnerable to commit sin. We are vulnerable to commit sin. So, but there is a difference between a forgiven person and the non-forgiven person. So that is the difference. So the difference is that if you have repented your sins, you are a forgiven person. So meaning you desire, you decide to stop sinning. You already uh, ask God to forgive all your sins and you have asked God to uh, give strength and power, wisdom to live a holy life. So that is the difference because uh, a person that is uh, who do not uh, stop sinning or who do not repent his sins, so that is the unforgiven. So those unforgiven person has no part of uh, God's salvation or God's promise to go to heaven. Only those who have uh, done their part to uh, forg uh, to repent. So if that person had already done his part, repenting his sins, asked forgiveness of his sins, so that person is qualified to have the power of God to live in a godly living, in godliness, in holiness. So that's the difference. Uh, the difference, uh, as what I have said, the unforgiven person and the forgiven person. So those unforgiven are those who have not repented, who have not decided to stop sinning and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But the forgiven person is already repented his sins, his sins, and decided to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the forgiven person. So the difference now is that the forgiven person is under grace, under the grace of God. But the unforgiven person, those who did not, who did not repent of their sins, they are under condemnation or under the judgment of God. So that's why it is uh, encouraged by us, by our Lord Jesus Christ, that we must repent. We must repent of our sins, uh, stop sinning and doing what is the will of God, serving God, so that we will be under the grace of God. We will not be under the condemnation of God. Because also Paul says that in Romans 8, uh, there is now therefore no condemnation to, the, to those who live in Christ Jesus or to those who are united in Christ Jesus. So there is now therefore no condemnation. So, but those who do not uh, live or who, do, who does not repent their sins and uh, does not serve the Lord Jesus Christ, so those are under the condemnation. So that is why uh, we can uh, have the claim to be a Christian and to live in godliness. It's because God is with us. So if we have already repented our sins. So enjoy fellowship, according to Apostle John. It says there in a... But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Now, uh, have you noticed this? Uh, observe this uh, passage that Apostle John says. But if we walk in the light, so if we walk in the light, as he is walking in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So... <clears throat> Walking in the light, meaning to say living in godliness, living in uh, according accordance to the word of God, uh, we live accordingly what the Bible says or what Jesus had taught us. So that is, we have fellowship with him. We have fellowship with him. We walk in the light as he is walking in the light. And uh, he says there that uh, uh, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ purifies all our sins or cleanses all our sins. So, it means to say that there is now a difference between the forgiven person or a person who have decided to live uh, in accordance with the word of God. So the difference is the blood of Jesus purifies all our sins. <clears throat> purifies your sins if you walk in the light. So the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses all your sins. <clears throat> so that is the uh, advantage of those who have repented all their sins. So because the blood of Jesus Christ purifies or cleanses all your sins. So you are forgiven. We are forgiven. So that is uh, we have we enjoy fellowship with God. We have we enjoy fellowship with another. According to this uh, in verse 8, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So if we claim that we have no sin, so that is a big lie. Very, very big lie. So 
That's why Apostle John said that if uh, we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So the truth is not in us. That means to say that we must humble ourselves. We must humble ourselves and acknowledge that we are sinners. And we are sinners and we committed sins and we need the forgiveness of all our sins. We need the forgiveness of all our sins. So that is uh, enjoying the fellowship with God. So we enjoy fellowship with God. So we have an advocate to the Father. It says, my dear children, I write unto you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So Apostle John said that, uh, uh, my dear children, he said, now why said why Apostle John said that, my dear children? It's because he, he was writing this uh, letter when he was very old. Now he was very old. John was very old at this time, at this moment when he wrote this uh, letter. So his reader, to the young, to the young generation, I said that, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. So, so that you will not sin. So it means to say that uh, he wrote this so that we will not sin. We will not live in sin. And he said that, uh, but if anybody commits sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, the Lord Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So uh, if we are born again, we are really, we're really born again. So we have the righteous one, Jesus Christ, our advocate or our defender, so our attorney. So Jesus Christ is our righteous one attorney. He is our righteous attorney to defend us so that uh, when we face the Father, uh, the Holy Father, uh, we have our defense. We have our advocate, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So we enjoy fellowship with that. So that's all that I am sharing you today. God bless.